Allah bari tala tells in the Quran, he says that he does not. He says, Qul, tell them, Inna Allah la ya'muru bil fasha. Allah does not command any shameful deed. Atakuluna ala Allahi ma la ta'lamun. You say about Allah what you don't know? In ignorance, God Almighty telling his prophets to go walk about naked. And speaking language like this, God talking, so behold, I will corrupt your seed. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 3. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces. You know what's dung? You know what's dung? Yes, excreta. Yes, God Almighty is going to spread dung on your faces. Even the dung of your solemn feasts. And one shall take you away with it. Malachi 2, 3. And thou shalt eat it, telling another prophet of his, another prophet of God, Ezekiel. God tells him, chapter 4, verse 12 of Ezekiel, he says, And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. What? And thou shalt bake it with dung that cometh out of man in their sight. What you see, fresh dung, fresh excreta with barley cakes. You shall eat it. This is, the, this is God Almighty telling his prophet to, to eat barley cakes with dung. And fresh dung too, fresh. It must be fresh, not that stale, dried up thing, you know, that you can burn like goat, goat, this thing. God Almighty. He is not like Shylock. You know Shylock, Shakespeare made him famous, Shylock. He wanted that Christian pound of flesh. He entered into a contract, an agreement with this Christian. He lent him some money. He said, look, by a certain date, if you don't pay, I'll, I'll take one pound of flesh. Shakespeare made Shylock famous. He made the Jews famous. Shakespeare, William Shakespeare. When the contract was broken, he is demanding for one pound of flesh. That's all. He said, I want one according to contract. But God Almighty, he is not satisfied with one for one. <laughs> In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 5, he says, for I am the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. You make a sin, I am going to visit their sins and punish them to third and fourth generation. Out of those who hate me. And he's going to punish you seven times over for whatever you do. And after all, Leviticus chapter 26 verses 18, 23, 24, 28. And after all this, if you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. If you, you didn't do your homework, my son, so you're supposed to get one cut, one lash. But no, no, no. This headmaster of yours will give you seven cuts. Everybody is supposed to get one cut for not doing homework, you will get seven cuts. And if by these things you are not reformed by me, but walk contrary to me, then also will walk contrary to you, and I will punish you yet seven times for your sins, seven times. Then I also again, then I also will walk contrary to you in fury and I even I will chastise you seven times for your sins. Allah tells us in the Quran, this is what he says, Inna allaha la yazlimu misqala zarra. Allah will not do the least bit of injustice to you. He says, Jaa bil hasanati falahu khayrun minha. If you do a good deed, he will reward you better than your deed you do one good deed allah says he'll reward you better than your deed he can reward you a million fold for every deed of yours good deed of yours woman jaa bi sayyati but if you do anything evil fala yuzzal lazina amilu sayyat illa ma kanu ma kanu ya'malun and the doers of evil are only punished to the extent of their deeds whatever you deserve you get you do good allah can reward you a million fold you do evil to the extent of what you have done you'll be punished the god of the bible says seven times over and i'm going to visit the sins of the fathers into the third and fourth generation taking revenge god almighty he deceives says the bible he deceives he says he deceives or the prophet is crying out jeremiah the prophet he says jeremiah jeremiah the book of jeremiah chapter 20 verse 7 he says oh lord oh lord you deceive me and i was deceived god Almighty, you deceive me and i was deceived you are stronger than i and have prevailed what can i do i'm helpless if you want to deceive me how can i resist deception 
you are stronger than I and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. Oh Lord, you deceive me. You are a deceiver. God is a deceiver. Allah tells you in the Quran that he guides, he does not misguide. And on and on. There's so much. There's so much. Wallah, there's so much. I can keep you here further for hours. But that is not my purpose. I think we should now give opportunity to my brothers and sisters, Muslim and non-Muslim, preferably our non-Muslim brothers first. If there are any who would like to ask questions, I think they should be given the first opportunity to ask questions. And after, give them the first opportunity. We don't want them to say later on, it's a look man, uh, the time expired and you know, they didn't give us a break. So people, I think if they will queue up, they will have an idea of what amount of time to give to the questioner. The mic is there. I think the mic is too close to the stage. You know, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, the mic is too close to the stage. So in other words, if you are sitting down, we can't see the, the questioner. If it can be pulled further front, it will be very nice. See, see if it can be pulled further front. That's better. That's better. Yes. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your patience here in Jazakallah. Mr. Ahmad Dida, ladies and gentlemen, please be advised that you are invited to direct questions to the speaker which are relevant to his address. Statements will not be welcome. It's questions that are required which are relevant to the address. All those desirous of directing questions to the speaker must please proceed to the mic. Preference will be given to those who actually come first. As Mr. Didat has indicated, we should allow the non-Muslims to actually direct their questions to the speaker. Any more? Let them come forward first before we get started. Okay. Yes, I'd recommend that those who are desirous of asking questions come along and join the queue at this stage in order to ensure that there's a proper order. You have a question, sir. Yes, I'd like to ask Mr. Didat why he didn't reply to my letter that I wrote to him on the 15th of May 1987 which I know arrived in his offices in South Africa and he didn't have the courtesy to reply to this letter could he please tell me why was it because he couldn't reply to it Sir, he that question is not relevant to his discussion I appreciate that it might be well, it does have to do, if I might just say, it does. Because in this letter, I raise the question as to whether the modern Quran is a true representation of the original work of Muhammad. Because I sent to Mr. Didat... Is that your question, sir? It was the question raised in this letter. Are you raising that question? I am sir? raising that question. Mr. Didat will now attempt to answer the question, Mr. Didat. What was the question? Chairman, Mr. Chairman, what was the question? I, I Whether didn't... the modern day Quran is a true representation of the original work of Muhammad. What was that? I didn't hear. The question, as I understand it, is Is the Quran, gentlemen said, modern day Quran, a true representation of the teachings of Muhammad? Is that what you said? Yes. Has it been added to as the the book that I mentioned in this letter claims that the Quran has been added to over the centuries. Now, Mr. Didat levels a challenge to the Christian about the Bible being added to, but in fact, this book claims that the Quran has also been added to over the centuries. In other words, Would you like to reply to that? In other words, is the Quran original or has there been any changes made correct. to the Quran? That's right. correct. That's correct. This Quran is the same Quran that Muhammad left. Word for word, and for 1400 years, this is the only religious book on the face of the earth which has remained pure without the change of a dot. And these are the testimony of Sir William Moyer, 
that the only book remaining so pure for 1400 years, he said 1200 years of old, but for 1400 years is this book. This is the book that Muhammad left. There is no change in this book. Why didn't you tell me that? I wrote to you in May 1987 and asked you that. Thank you.